Hello, uh, my name is Chad Houston, and I'm going to be presenting, hopefully, uh, a video here all about the periodic table. Uh, first of all, I got to tell you, I love the, I mean, well, I try and only love people and not things, but if I could love something, it would be definitely the periodic table. I have a periodic table. Actually, I have a little bobblehead Murray Curie. I've got a periodic table pencil box, periodic table uh, high tops, custom made. I like to call them my ear chads, periodic table shower curtain. Wife wasn't too happy about that. A couple of periodic table t-shirts, multiple periodic table ties, periodic table bow tie. Um, if I were to get a tattoo, I would probably get the periodic table, a mirror image of it on my chest. So every time I woke up, looked in the mirror, there I'd see the periodic table. One thing I don't have is a periodic table pair of periodic table boxer shorts, which I believe M Mr. Gar does. Uh, and I cannot steal them because if he knows that they're gone, he's going to know that I have them. So anyway, love the periodic table. This is the periodic table 101. Uh, please make sure to download this uh, the PDF of this uh, in the notes below. Th these will be guided notes, and I've got several links. You can um, do a blank periodic table for like note taking, things like that. This is a very good printable periodic table. It's the most updated version, it goes up to element 118. ptable.com, which is fantastic for all kinds of, we'll use it a lot in class. The video periodic table, totally cool. By the way, the guy there who's the professor with the wild hair. Uh, if I were to have a man crush on somebody, it would definitely be on him. So as you can tell, big fan of the periodic table. Let's get cracking on this. So um, our goal today is, again, periodic table 101, chemist's best friend. We'll talk about what we gain from the elements, uh, different parts of the periodic table, what the periodic table law is, and some different properties. So without further ado, uh, let's go. So what do you get when you look at the periodic table? First of all, Every single tile on there is going to give you information about that element. At the bare minimum, at the bare minimum, you can find out that the symbol, in this case it's carbon, sometimes they give you the name, but not always, but most of the time they do. Uh, six, the smaller whole number, is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. Super important. This larger number down here, 12.011, is going to be the atomic mass of the element it's a weighted average of all the isotopes and if you don't know what that means don't worry because we'll get to it but basically we have uh, the atomic number a version of the atomic mass number with some little things done to it the name the symbol and they can also give you a lot of other information uh, as well like where it's found in nature or electrons all kinds of things about properties and all that this is just sort of like the basic okay now uh, the basic parts of the periodic table. So the basic parts of the periodic table, uh, some things I would really encourage you to kind of focus on here is, um, okay, so these right here, one through seven, these are the rows going left to right. Okay, these are the rows or the periods, right? And then going up and down, one through 18 here, going up and down, these columns are the groups or the families. So again, uh, the rows and the periods left to right, um, up and down, up and down are the columns and the families. And the reason they call them families is because usually elements in the same column or the same family typically has similar properties. Going left to right in the rows, the pro properties drastically change. So that's the basic part. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, and I'm sorry for not having this up sooner, but we're going to go to ptable.com. And there it is. And a couple other things. These families actually have names. So a couple names that you're going to need to know. Uh, and that's not it there, but let's take a look. Is this first family is the alkali family. And again, you're going right here. Alkali metals. These are the alkaline earth metals. Okay. This big group in the middle are what are called the transition metals. Okay. So kind of in here are the trans trans transition metals. Uh, over to the far right. These are almost all of these are gases. These are um, the noble gases. These are the halogen family, which are the halogen gases. Uh, and then over here, we just say, okay, this is the oxygen family, the nitrogen family, carbon family, and so on. If we go down here, going left to right, now this is a little bit different, left to right, this is the lanthanide family, and this is the actinide family. And basically, these were kind of pulled out of the periodic table. If you see here, we start at number 56. And then it goes 57 to 71, and then it goes back to 72. So this is the lanthanide family. A little weird. goes left to right. Okay. So you'll need to know the names of those families and rows and uh, the rows, the periods, and columns. Okay. Okay. So if we're to keep on going here, 
Um, next one, now we're going to talk about is this really cool thing called the periodic law. Okay, so what is the periodic law? Okay, so if you take a look at this, here's one example. And one example for the periodic law is we're going to look at the atomic radius. So the radius going from the center of the atom to the outer edge, the outermost electrons. And here's some things that you end up finding. Okay, so they, they have the radius. This is atomic number down here. And notice what happens. In general, going as the atomic number increase, the radius decreases, which is kind of weird. And then all of a sudden, there's neon, right? There's neon. Goes way back up, starts over at sodium, goes all the way down, 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 decreases, 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 decreases to krypton. Then it jumps back up, and this keeps on going. Okay, so this is called the periodic law, not just for this, but for a, a lot of other things. So what are we trying to show here with this data? Well, what we're trying to show with the data is this, is that as we go, um, the periodic law states that if you put all of the elements in order by atomic number, the properties generally repeat. Okay, they tend to, re they tend to repeat, and they repeat periodically. So what we saw is with atomic number three, had a, kind of a big radius, and it got smaller, 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 smaller. Got to neon, very small. And then guess what happened? Go to sodium, gets bigger. All of a sudden, we go left to right, gets smaller, 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 smaller. And then all of a sudden, it increases with potassium and so on. So the properties repeat periodically, hence the periodic law. And this was developed by Mendeleev. Okay? And, the, and it's not just atomic radius. It's a lot of different properties that we'll see here in a minute that follow that same idea. Periodically, we see the trends and the patterns and the properties repeating. It's not just haphazard. Um, now, next one. Okay, so let's just go over a couple of trends real quick, and we'll, we'll just go over some. Now, when we're talking about properties, and again, with these periodic trends, uh, what I like to tell people, physical properties are ones that are uh, what I call personal properties. Like if you say, well, you know, like my hair is brown. Well, okay, it's gray. You know, I wear glasses and I'm wearing a certain color shirt. Um, chemical properties are social. Uh, it's how things interact with other things, right? Okay, so and the periodic table can help us with both of these. And so we're just going to look at these different properties. And we'll take a quick look over here. Now, the history of this is fascinating, which unfortunately we, we won't get to. But let's just look at a few. If you look up here, right, metals, for instance, for the most part are on the left side. Non-metals happen to be on the right side. Um, most solids are on the left side of the periodic table. Uh, Non-metals, maybe the gases and the liquids, uh, maybe not all the liquids are kind of on the right side. Um, oh, and by the way, these here are called the metalloids because they can't make up their minds if they're a metal or non-metal. Uh, we could look at density, and here's why I really like this. I don't know why this is doing this. There we go. That's nice. Uh, let's go to properties here. Um, let's talk about density, right? So if we talk about density, doo -doo 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 -doo, there we go. Density in general. As you see, uh, for something like potassium, uh, the density uh, is a certain amount. As we go left to right, uh, tends to greatly increase. Okay, and so, so there are certain properties. And again, going top to bottom, the density also tends to, and you can just follow the numbers. It's not perfect, but in general, tends to increase going top to bottom. So the reason we're, we're showing this is to say that these patterns and trends are all over the periodic table. And we're just touching on a few of them. And this is really the cool part. Um, we talked about solids and gas. Let's talk about chemical properties real quick. Chemical properties, same thing. Over here, lithium, I can take lithium and put it in water. It might go fizz a bit. You put potassium and sodium in water, it'll explode. These are some of the most reactive, but it reactivity increases, generally increasing going down. It decreases going left to right. Aluminum is a metal we can use as aluminum foil. You try and use sodium as like sodium foil, it'll explode. Won't, won't, it won't work. Now, for the nonmetals, though, it's a little bit different. I'll put this over here. For the nonmetals, it's it's a bit different. Uh, these are all nonmetals that are very, very non reactive, but they be, and except for maybe xenon, because it, it actually reacts. Here, these are the most reactive nonmetals in the periodic table. Uh, iodine, we can put on our wounds. Chlorine is used as a weapon of mass destruction, and fluorine reacts with anything it gets close to. So here the reactivity is actually opposite. It gets more reactive going starting at the bottom and going to the top. Why is that? 
Well, it's because of the wonderful world of electrons, which we're going to look at later on. But uh, right now, this is just to show you the basic parts of the periodic table, that there are lots of patterns and trends that we're going to continue to learn more about. And I'll give you a big hint. It's kind of tied into the Coulombic interactions and the electrons, which play a big part, which we'll get to later. It's really, really cool. Fun fact, Mendeleev was the dude who came up with this one. Many people were trying to, to develop the periodic table. He's the one who, when he was writing a textbook for freshmen in college, um, got to this chapter and just put these things on cards and tried to, um, he liked playing card games and just trying grouping things um, and where they had the same properties. And he didn't try to force things in groups where the properties just didn't fit. Uh, fabulous guy, which we'll learn more about. So don't forget, uh, make sure to check out the links, download the guided notes, and try and fill them in and come with lots of questions. As always, I love to talk about the periodic table.